I thought this was originally uh, radium and plutonium, and I got really excited. I'm like, it's like a little nuclear reactor. It's dangerous. That's the kind of stuff I want to light my cigar with when I buy a kick-ass Ducati. Yeah, man stuff. <laughs> KW makes the perfect suspension for every demand. Find them in the description below. Yes, what's up people? I am not at the shop. I am somewhere in Pennsylvania at night and it is snowing. I am properly uh, dressed for the occasion by wearing my driving shoes that are worn out in the shop. If you notice there, that is in fact my sock and toe that is worn out. And now my feet are getting snowy. Okay, so why is Casey on a semi-domesticated goose chase, which I think has officially become a wild goose chase? Well. You see, uh, as addicted car aficionados do, we surf the internet in the nether regions of the internet to try to find cool stuff because right now everything is price inflated and everybody thinks all their crap's worth a million dollars, which ruins it for fun. So I digress. Long story short, I also like motorcycles. And with both cars and motorcycles, I have certain dream vehicles. And I have come to learn that one of my dream motorcycles a bevel drive Ducati twin, yes, is somewhere in Pennsylvania, far away. Um, now, I reached out to this person a number of times. They have not sent me any proper pictures, and the person whom I've been speaking with could use a little experience and growth in the area of communication. Now, I, uh, I've been around the block a time or two, and uh, clearly there is enough reality to this that I am on my way. But as the story goes, a gentleman some 30 years ago moved to the United States from, I think, North Africa and Europe. And he was a motorcycle enthusiast who had a number of very cool Ducatis. And to get them to the United States, he had to take them all apart and ship them over multiple containers. And then when he got here, he put one together and rode it, and it's really nice. And then as a 1980 Ducati, last of the kickstart, big bevel twins, Mike Halewood. Yes. Um, and the interesting thing about this is when I talk to the person representing it for the guy, because the guy that has it hates all social media, the internet, and everything electronic, including cell phones. And he also hates dealerships, speculators, collectors, and museums. And I can't blame him. And I found that out. My camera guy is freezing. Doug, you're freezing. Look at him. He's shaking. Doug's shaking. Because it's so cold. Oh, you're shaking because you're a Porsche aficionado. And it's no? cold. So, he is a... Why don't we just go in the truck? Let's. Okay, to the truck. You know, it is kind of cold out. We're on an adventure, and maybe this will make the last video I ever make. Partially because of the snow and this truck that's two-wheel drive and partially because we're going to God knows where to meet God knows who at God knows what hour at night to potentially get some weird old motorcycles that only weirdos like me like that was imported from Africa 30 years ago and soaked in military non-corroding stuff. Yes! Welcome to the Casey Push YouTube channel. And now for a wholesome dinner of Burger King. Durr. Okay, people, I am at another gas station. It is daylight, and I have, in fact, been awake for now 31 or two hours. Yes, this is not what I expected. The goose case continues because we arrived at this gentleman's house. I think, Doug, were we in a house? There was a house there, and there were buildings, and there was stuff everywhere. Uh, it was a, a, like an American Pickers delight. Uh, American Pickers never went anywhere this cool. Anyway, uh, the guy was really cool. We're going to get on with that, but I'm tired. Long story short, I have 1.5 motorcycles. Is that approximate? Doug, you think that's about right? 1.5 motorcycles? 1.75 Yes! I would be more excited, but again, I've been up for over 30 hours. So check this out, you guys. Uh, it happened. It was real. It was, in fact, a semi-domesticated goose chase. Now, this is a 1989, or God, I, I am tired, you guys. This is a 1981 uh, Ducati uh, Mike Halewood replica, which is the 900 Super Sport engine, the square case bevel drive. Come a little closer, you can take a peek. Now, I am excited of this for a multitude of reasons, but I have lost my ability to articulate intelligently because I'm a bit tired and rocking the Red Bulls so that I can get back home, which is terrible but you got to do what you got to do anyway this bike is all original um the gentleman was the second owner he bought it in 1987 in south africa uh he saw the first guy did apparently there were like 
two, maybe four of these. They went to South Africa and he was all excited. And he has had this motorcycle since 1987 until today when I bought it from him. And um, it was really neat. And if you want to come around, Doug, you can kind of walk around and look and see stuff. Um, because the he was a really neat guy. You know, like things really mattered to him. Maybe you can walk around and see over here the light too. Highly intelligent person, collected a lot of interesting things. And he's got a number of Bonneville uh, world speed records on motorcycles. 1930s Harley Davidson flatheads with turbochargers doing nearly 200 miles an hour and smoking people on modern stuff. And he loves it. He's like, yeah, take that, you bloody prick. I didn't think I could do it. Kind of like that. Love the attitude. Uh, but he's been developing this stuff over years. And this was kind of his crown jewel. And, you know, he's had it for a long time. He said he was only going to... He was going to sell it before he made 10,000 miles. So it's got less than 10,000 miles, although it's in kilometers. And it runs beautifully, which I'll start up for a future one. So we arrived late at night with these people. We don't know. We walk in. The bike looks beautiful. It's original. It shows some patina to it. He's like, here's what you do. And um, you leave the ignition off. You turn the choke on. You flip over. It's kickstart. It's not electric start. It's a 900 kickstart. And you kick it over three times to get fuel in it. Then you turn the ignition on, leave it on full choke, crack at an eighth throttle, whoo bam kick it over, boom, start it right up on it, get it fired up, kill the choke, ran beautifully. Just, it, it had so much character and it ran well and it like went, it's a straight time capsule back to the early 80s and everything that was Ducati's prowess in the 70s of the race bikes, racing at the Isle of Man, things, people like Mike Halewood and I'm just so like touched and enamored because this man had this bike for, what is that? Like 30, I don't know, 30 some years? I can't do math, I've been up too long guys. And now I get to be the third owner. It's never been wrecked. And he took it all apart in a million pieces and put in a bunch of crates when he came to the United States in 1994 uh, because South Africa was a mess, apparently. I've never been there. Don't get on, on my case. But apparently South Africa was a mess. A lot of neat things about it, but a total mess. So he's like, I'm out. I'm going to the United States. Guy speaks four languages, been all around the world, highly intelligent engineer, builder, fabricator. He's sailed boats. He's sailed around the world four times. Incredible stories there. I have to come back to them and tell stories. And I just really enjoyed connecting with him and learning. Um, so here it is. And I have to tell you, when he showed it to me, the guy's not on the internet. He doesn't have a cell phone. You know, he, he, he hates dealerships. He hates people that broker bikes. He hates museum. He hates big collectors. And honestly, so do I. Screw those people. They destroy this whole thing. And I was just so honored that he s saw me and sold it to me to be, to, to carry the, the, the love and the passion and the history that is Ducati forward because I wanted to ride it, you know, and caretake it. And that's really meant a lot to me personally that this gentleman did that, who's been around the world. I connected in a bunch of neat ways to him and kind of resonated with his passions and with this, and uh, it means a lot. So this, this Ducati rolled out of the factory the same year I did. Yes, we are the same age. So that's kind of neat, right? And uh, we're in both great shape, ready to go. Although I think this thing has original tires. So probably ought to put new tires on it. Actually, probably ought to put some new tires on me. Look, you can see my sock. <laughs> that's my toe. Okay, anyway. So that's, I got it. It's going to be a lot of fun. But now I'm going back to Ohio and it's winter, so that's going to be a drag. Now, let's move on to something else. Want, Doug, come on over here to the back. I want to show you guys something else. Now, I'm a very silly person, as you all know. And I have a number of projects that can keep me busy for a long time. And I've bought another one. Or you can look at it this way. I didn't buy another project. I bought some bitch and parts that I can use one day. Uh, it's a project. Okay, shut up, Casey. So anyway, this is a Ducati 750 engine. It is, a, I believe, a 1972 GT. Does not have the Desmodromic heads. Um, and you can tell it's a GT. Here's the old Barani wire wheels. Same as like Ferrari had back in the day, Baranis. Single... Um, disc brake in the front means it's a gt not a sport a super sport it's got the original phantom tires on it but there it is there's a gt frame drum brake in the back disc brake in the front got the original shocks and everything on it and um got a fiberglass tank in it got the seat it's it's a wreck 
fairing in the front, but I think the fairing is English and they modified it in the late seventies, but he brought it over and like most of the parts are here and I'm kind of looking at it. I'm like, you know, it takes a lot of effort to put something back stock. So I'm kind of thinking I'm going to build my dream, uh, early seventies Ducati race bike. That's kind of bitching, right? Um, but in the meantime, I should just clean up what I got, put it together. So it's at least something I can wheel around the shop until I decide what I'm doing. But uh, I know um, the company out in California still has all the molds for all the old Ducati race stuff, the fairings and the tanks and everything. So I can get all new tanks and fairings uh, for the time period and just fix this up and see what I got and clean up and you know make something out of it. So that's pretty neat in the future, we'll see. Um, but a lot, of, a lot of great things happening. Um, sorry I didn't bring guys along for the ride. I got pictures here, but I knew the gentleman was a nice gentleman and um, with this bike, come on over here, Doug, you can see it while we're chatting. Um, I could tell that for this person, you know, this motorcycle and connecting with me really, it was, it, it had a lot of meaning, you know, and it wouldn't have been proper for me to just roll in with a camera. You know, uh, I, I love bringing you guys everything, but there's some things that have to be kind of sacred, you know, building relationships with people. And he doesn't want to be all up on the internet. And maybe in the future, he'll do a video with me. I didn't want to ask to be part of that right now because I really respected this person and his privacy and his life and what we got to learn from it. Actually, something is really neat. I want to show you. He gave uh, Doug and me a little gift. He's a massive collector, collects all kinds of stuff. And um, now we got, Doug and I got all excited because we thought these things were radioactive initially. I don't think they are. This is a lighter from 1928. And uh, his buddy said it was plutonium and radium in it, which back in the day they experimented with stuff that's dangerous. So I'm not entirely sure if it's not radioactive, but check this out, Woo -hoo, a lighter. In here you put wood alcohol or methanol, which back then they called Colombian spirits. And here, I'm gonna cover that up so we don't lose it all. In here is a teeny tiny filament of platinum with black platinum crushed into these little balls. So it's got these little bollocks. Now, in here is uh, methanol, like you're on an Indy car on wood alcohol, and the flame or the fumes come up, and the fumes will catalyze with the platinum, and they'll start to glow. I don't know if you can see that. Is it firing off here? Come on, it's really cold outside. I'm gonna end up burning the crap out of myself. Hold on. Oh yeah, it's going out. Hold on. Come on, get up. Fire up. Oh no, it's cold outside. Come on. I'm gonna burn the crap out of myself. All right, we'll try it inside. That was anticlimactic, Casey. Durr. Okay, anyway, I thought this was originally uh, radium and plutonium, and I got really excited. I'm like, it's like a little nuclear reactor. It's dangerous. That's the kind of stuff I want to light my cigar with when I buy a kick ass Ducati. Yeah, man stuff. Either way, platinum's still cool. Um, so. It's still badass, but it's not radioactive, or at least I don't think it is right now. Anyway, for, Doug, where was I going with this? I'm tired. I've been up a long time. Um, I was just hoping it wasn't going to light while we were standing next to a gas pump. Oh, well, it's diesel. It's not that volatile. We're going to live forever. I'm disappointed it's not a tiny nuclear reactor. God. Okay. Anyway, so uh, I'm just really excited about this. So kicked over the bike, it fired up, and I just felt super honored. Um, that the, the gentleman chose to sell it to me. He told me later that, you know, there's a certain amount of honor um, with this, which is almost completely gone on the internet, on YouTube, with idiot speculators, collectors, investors, museums, freaking valuation tools, magazines, everything that's made to jack up the prices. I hate those things, and so does he, because it ruins what this is really about, the art, the passion, and the soul with vehicles. So it was, it was really special. And it meant a lot to me that it meant a lot to him. And we totally circumvented the bullshit of all that uh, because this is not, it, it's not a, what, what do you call that, Doug, when people have something just because they think it's cool and makes them feel special, status even though they're symbol. not? Yeah, status symbol. It's not that. F your status symbol. F your speculation in your museums and stuff. F that. It's a motorcycle. It's, it's art, it's craftsmanship, it's engineering, it's a passion, it's a soul of Ducati of the time. It's all original. It was caretaked beautifully by two people. And now it gets to be caretaken beautifully by me to go ride. I don't care about your show. I don't care about going to your cruise. I don't care about that crap. You know what I care about? Going 
and just ripping through the countryside and the river roads. That's what I care about. And that's why I fell in love with Ducati when I was a kid because I loved the sound of the Japanese bikes when I was a kid. My dad took me to mid-Ohio when I was a kid and I remember going to Thunder Valley and, and the bikes would come over that blind corner and they would, they would come over and you couldn't see them. And I was listening to the Japanese bikes I thought were cool when I was a kid and my dad says, you hear that? And I, I'm like, yeah, and it's going doom, doom. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, that's a Ducati. And at that moment, I remember seeing this Ducati coming, ripping over in the early 90s. Doom, doom, just like ripping badass red Italian thing. I'm like, huh, that's something special. And I fell in love with the Mark at that time. So it's been something I've chased for a long time. I, I actually raced a four cylinder 350 GP Honda vintage bike in 2010 at the vintage races. Um, won my group and um, there was a 750 Sport, which is like the, the engine I've got over there that I got to ride. It was a beautiful bike. Couldn't afford it at the time, and then the price is raised. I never got to afford one. So having this bike and that project now is really special to me to keep going with that, and i just uh, just really excited about it. I don't know if you want to take a closer look, Doug, real quick. I'm going to kind of finish this up, but uh, I'm tired. I've been on the road a lot. I've been up for more than 30 hours now, and... Um, you know, I'm excited. Uh, so I'll bring you guys along, but I uh, hope this video means a little bit um, to you guys. Uh, just to, you, you can back up, Doug. Look at the whole thing. <laughs> so you don't just <laughs> kind of scan. We're both tired, we're, we're both whatever. Um, but I hope it means something to you, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I kind of don't want to share everything in the world with you guys, no offense, but like, I hope this inspires you all in some way and I hope it inspires maybe older people that are hanging on to stuff like this like you know shellax like if you actually care about this stuff you kind of have to set it free because newsflash we're all going to shuffle off our modal coil at some point I you're gonna die maybe sooner than me maybe sooner than something else and the things you care about you need to figure out a way for those to carry on in the future whether that's a material object or the philosophy and the art and all the meaning and human aspect of something like a Ducati, if, if that means something to you, you need to find a way for it to mean something to people in the future to move on or it will die with you. I don't care if that sounds morbid. I've been up late and I'm disappointed this isn't a nuclear reactor, even though it's badass. And uh, I had a cool Ducati and I'm being all philosophical. What do you want? This is the Casey Puts YouTube channel. I'm honest, and I don't give a shit if you don't like that. <laughs> so on that note, I got to go home and go to bed and hopefully put up some Christmas lights so my wife's not mad at me. Doug, do you have any interesting things you want to say? <laughs> I'm taking the camera. Give it to me. His fingers are frozen. What do you think of this, Doug? Uh, my fingers are frozen. Oh. I think we need warmth. And um, isn't that a kick-ass bike? Wait, wait, wait. What did you think of the dude and where we were? Oh, the guy was... Here, the come over here by the bike. I want right. to see the bike and you, Doug. He was... Probably the most interesting person I have ever spoken to in my life Ooh, because of his... More than me, Doug? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Oddly enough, good. because he's older than you. Yeah, he's done more stuff than he's me. He's done more stuff than Sailed you. Sailed around yeah. the world four times. I have not done that. And he's built... And he grew up in South Africa, so there's a lot of fascinating yeah, social crazy, aspects of life he learned Crazy from that culture life. there. We learned about his growing up in South Africa with their... Highly different, different tribes than and racial inequalities, um, all kinds of crazy things. And the, the most fascinating thing I thought was him explaining to me how a camshaft works and how the adjustments that he had made on the 1937 Harley Flathead Harley Flathead camshaft literally doubled its horsepower output and put less stress on the motor so it actually ran more efficiently and would last longer. Um, yes. It was absolutely fascinating. And I'm not even an engineer or a mechanic or anything like that. And I was fascinated. So you can imagine Casey being just gaga. Totally. So way, way cool. Amazingly Thanks. cool. Thanks, buddy. Wait. All right, you guys. Uh, honestly, I'm tired. I, I think we got to go. The sun's still up. So are we. Yeah, I'd like to mostly get back to where I live before it's dark. <laughs> Shut up, Casey. It's time to go. Subscribe. See you guys next time. <laughs> yes, Ducati. Well, there's only one racing suit I've always dreamed of owning, and that's a Hinchman. Since 1925, Hinchman Racing Uniforms has been supplying suits to drivers ranging from Dale Earnhardt, Mario Andretti, and even Steve McQueen in the movie Le Mans. So guys, when it's time to go racing and you guys want to be safe and look amazing, 
Let's go classic American. Get yourself a henchman.